Hey guys, in this episode, I've got John Kiley on the show from Mid-Atlantic IRA, and he's talking about how to unlock your retirement plans, your 401k, your IRAs, and be able to invest it in real estate. So stand by. All right, Jack, welcome to the Hyperfast Wealth Show on the Hyperfast Agent channel. We're excited to have you. Uh, before we start, why don't you just tell everyone a little bit about your background and, and, uh, and what you do. And I'm, I'm excited to, you know, Sunil and I are excited to get into what you do. Okay, well, th thank you for the invitation. I, I thoroughly appreciate it. And uh, I'm a CPA by trade. I have a tax practice in, in uh, Frederick, Maryland. I also am the principal at Mid-Atlantic IRA. And we're a provider of self-directed IRAs. Uh, it allows clients to do th purchase alternative investments in their retirement account, things, generally things other than stocks and bonds. So that is primarily, in this space, real estate and making of loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, self-directed IRAs are something that um, I learned about about 10 years ago. I'm sure you've probably been doing a lot longer than that. But well, why yeah. do you think... I mean, most people don't even ever hear about this. Well, I think, I think first of all, I think the uh, generally the big reason for that is that most of the huge financial institutions, uh, you know, brokerage firms and banks have sort of co-opted that retirement uh, investment, if you will, to channel that into stocks and bonds. Most people's uh, 401k plans and what have you have been thoroughly invested in, in those types of vehicles. So you just naturally think that those are the only investments available right. to you, where truthfully, there's there's a wa much wider spectrum of investments. And, you know, and again, the uh, the government only only mentions two items that you can't do in IRAs. You can't buy uh, collectibles, so fine wines, works mm -hmm. of art, those sorts of things, and uh, and life insurance. Nice. But everything else is fair game and, uh, and real estate is a, is a great you know investment for yeah. uh, self-directed accounts. Now I remember uh, this is like going back 20 years when I was with you know, I did a lot of stuff with Charles Schwab back then. I, I specifically remember them telling me you can't do anything else with your IRA. They made it sound like there's just nothing else you can do with it. And almost 10 years after that, I learned that there is something you can do with this. So you're saying right. you can pretty much do anything you want except those two things. Right. right. So you know uh, institutions like Schwab and Fidelity and uh, Merrill Lynch and those guys. You know they'll they'll say that their uh, accounts are self-directed, but typically what they really mean is as long as you are buying what they sell, you can buy anything right, that they exactly, sell. That they okay? sell, <laughs> and and to them that means that is self-direction. Yeah. Uh, true self-direction again is that wider spectrum. So companies, you know, a self-directed right. company like ours, we don't typically we don't really uh, your investment option is yours. You decide. Yeah. Whether that's good for you, given your uh, your you know financial uh, background, your your level, your aversion to risk, and those sorts of things, and uh, you know yeah. we place the investment and we dot i's yeah. and cross t's. Right. And I, I remember not even you know not 20 years ago. I'm a little bit younger than you. So you know, but, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks fin for that. Financial uh, <laughs> financial advisors telling me. You know, they didn't tell me I couldn't do it, but they just made it sound like right. so scary. They were like, well, you got to get this right and that right. And the IRS could come in and do this. And they, they just made it seem really, really scary. And then a couple of years ago, I just Googled uh, companies before I met you, but I Googled a company and I like, had it set up on the on the phone in like a day or two. It, <laughs> like, is, it, wasn't, it wasn't that it's, hard. No, it's not a hard process. And, and you, you know, you have to keep in mind, and I don't, I don't mean to sound as if I'm bashing anybody, but generally the motivation for keeping you in, invested in, with them is they get paid, simply they get paid that way. Uh, you know, where we get paid and every, look, everybody, everybody gets paid to do something. You pay us to place an investment and to maintain the account to dot I's and cross T's. And that's the, you know, that's the big difference. Uh, again, we're not really looking at what you buy, you make that decision, mm -hmm. but we're the dotters of I's and crossers of T's. And quite frankly, what I always say to people is, you know, 
Self-direction gives you the, uh, the ability to invest in things maybe that you know a little more about. So if you mm -hmm. are a real estate person, mm -hmm. you naturally real estate is something that you understand and you, you get. I have, for instance, we have a client that only invests on one street. Mm -hmm. that's, her, that's her thing. She okay. knows the street well. That's yeah. right. You know, it's a it's a pretty long street. Thank well, goodness. The, it's but, the Rockefeller but that's, strategy. But, you know, but that's put the eggs in one basket right. and wash that basket. Right. But that's but that's her thing. Just right, as right, a lot right. of real estate people, you know, they they might be uh, looking at a certain size house or a certain type of real estate investment. Maybe they're in multifamily. But you can whatever your niche is, you can stay within that niche and you understand it, and it's a good investment for you. Yeah. No, I felt, I mean, again, when I learned about self-directed IRAs, it's been at least 10 years ago, I can't remember exactly when, is that I was so excited because, you know, what you're saying is that a self-directed IRA truly is self-directed, right? You get to make those decisions. Right. And I was kind of tired of just sending my money to some mutual fund or some stock, you know, whatever, that I didn't understand anything about, just like you said, mm -hmm. versus now I could take that money and put it into something I do understand, something local, something I can touch and feel, I understand what's going on. Right. So I, I think, you know, I just, I think it's, it's the, the vehicle is awesome. I feel like everybody should know about it. And I totally understand what you're saying is that these companies, large companies who dominate the market have an incentive to keep it, kind of keep you away from this. Right. Uh, you mentioned the, the startup part of it. Like, just can you walk us through like the quickly, like is the paperwork hard or how long does it take or how's your company No, it's that? it's actually, it's fairly simple. So there is, you know, there's generally, there's three main pieces of okay. paper that you need to touch. One is the application, which is name, rank, and serial number. Yeah, That's pretty simple. easy. Uh, next is a fee disclosure form, and it just uh, it, it's one sheet that we have anyway. Other other institutions are a little different, but basically we just want you to understand what mm -hmm. it is that you're paying, you're paying for, for right? those sorts of things. And then lastly is a transfer form, and that is that is a form that moves money from institution to institution. Okay. So, if you are opening an account with us, you would complete our transfer form. Okay. Uh, and basically that comes back to us and then we countersign that and send it on to right. whoever whoever has your account right. now and they act on those instructions and it may be right. you know send X number of dollars or it may be sent you know close my thing. account right, and right. send everything so so maybe like a maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes worth of paperwork we send it to you guys everything's yeah. set up and you guys yep. take it from there something like right. that so yep. pretty That's simple exactly. yeah I mean it's pretty not, simple doesn't sound much different than if my money was at right Schwab and I wanted to move it to Fidelity or I left my company right. and I wanted to roll that plan right. 401k or IRA into, you know, a Schwab, right? right? Is, it, is it kind of right. the same? It is, it's, it's very similar. The, you know, the other thing that we will do also is when somebody establishes an account with us, mm -hmm. we assign you to an account rep in our office, right. okay? So, and that's a little different from, from a lot of, uh, in fact, I think all other places. Generally, you call in and you talk to whoever answers the phone. Uh, that person is your point of contact for everything that you're doing, whether you're buying, selling, need a distribution, putting more money in, whatever it is that you're doing. And then it's that person's responsibility in our office to get you the paperwork that you need mm -hmm. and shepherd your investment through the process. So we're, we're sort of walking through that and making sure all the paperwork is done with you. And a lot of, in all other places, really what happens is they don't want to see any of your paperwork until you have it all together, and then you're going right. to submit it to them. And, right. and you guys, look, I've, I've bought some real estate, mm -hmm. it, not as much as either one of you guys right. have, but in the 15 or 20 pieces of real estate that I bought, I've never had two settlements go the same. Right, exactly. you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your horror um, stories could I, be much- I, uh, a whole episode much, on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, several, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but, but the reason that we do that is because we want to make sure that things go exactly as they're supposed to go and right. settlement occurs when settlement is supposed yeah. to occur. Yeah. Well, one thing I was, when I first started using self-directed IRAs, I was a little bit confused about, maybe you can clarify for, uh, for our audience here, is that pretty much any qualified plan can be moved, right? So if you have an IRA, a SEP IRA, a 401k, they can all be put into a self-directed type of fund. It's, can you talk a little bit about the different types? And, oh, sure. And so, how? well, the first thing to, to understand is self-direction is just, a, it, you know, quite frankly, is a marketing term. And, and simply what that means is that you can invest in anything that permissible by law, right. okay? So money, uh, to open a self-directed account or to move money into mm -hmm. a self-directed IRA, money has to come from another 
qualified, qualified plan, or right? IRA. So the one thing that you want to make sure happens is that traditional IRA moves yeah. to traditional IRA, Roth to Roth, like, okay. like accounts move to like accounts. Right. With the exception of when you have a break in service, so if you, had a, if you were involved in a 401k plan, at a previous employer, right. then that uh, you have the ability to roll those funds over into an IRA or a self-directed IRA. Okay? Correct. If it, now some people, just to make things a little more complicated, <clears throat> in some 401k plans allow Roth contributions or what are referred to as Roth designated. Right. So those would have to move over to a Roth account your pre-tax or traditional dollars would have to move to a traditional IRA. So you do want to keep those two separate, okay. but you know, we, we will walk you through all of that, but you can't, you can't move 401k money until you have a break in service. Okay. So if you're your okay. current employer, if you're, you know, if you've been working for ABC company, right. you're not generally speaking, you're not going to be allowed to move those dollars. Okay. Until you, until you have a break in service. Right. Right. Once, right. once I've got it in an IRA, whether it's a SEP IRA, a traditional IRA, Roth IRA, once I do that, it can, it can, it just moves right. into the same kind of self-directed IRA. Right. Right. Exactly. That's great. I mean, since we're on that topic, um, you know, a lot of people that are watching are self-employed. They either, you know, either completely have their own company where they get a 1099. If, what, what is your recommendation for, again, establishing a, a self, what, I guess, a, uh, an IRA versus a, a solo 401k? Can you talk a little bit about that? And what's, well, what's your recommendation? There? Well, the, you know, I will, uh, you know, somebody's recommendation I would leave to whoever their, their okay. advisors are. Having said that, um, you know, my general, you know, Jack's guidelines, right, right, <laughs> if right. you will, yeah. are, you know, you should, you should be looking at a plan of some sort. So a traditional IRA or Roth IRA will allow you to, to, to defer or put away, deduct up to $6,000 in the current year. Okay. And if you're, if you're lucky enough to be over 50, then uh, you get a $1,000 right. uh, catch up, right. all right? If you have a business, so if you're self-employed, you might be a sole proprietor, you might have an LLC, you might have an S corporation. Those right. are the three biggest. It doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter right. which one. Exactly. You have additional options. So your, your business could sponsor a SEP, okay. Simplified Employer Plan, which would allow you to put away up to 25%, and there's a, there's a back out for, for Social Security and Medicare. So it works out to right. be roughly 20% of your net earnings. Okay. okay. There's what's called a simple IRA, mm -hmm. which is, I, I would, it's, it's about halfway between a, a SEP mm -hmm. and a 401k. Right. And that would allow you to defer out of your earnings about $13,000. If you're over 50, you get a $3,000 push. Okay. And, and then there's a, uh, there's a matching contribution, right. which you have a couple of options there, but generally it's not more than 5%. Okay. okay? And then last, if you are, this, this plan is only good if you have no employees, so it's owners only. So if you're a sole owner, of an entity, mm -hmm. or maybe you have a partner, but okay. you don't have you don't have what are referred to as common law employees. Right. Anybody else getting a, getting right. paid right. a solo four hundred one k, and that would allow you to defer the first nineteen thousand dollars of okay. of uh, earnings, right. and then a catch up if you're over fifty again. You've got a six thousand right. dollar right. catch up, and up to 20% of right, so the Right, you get net. that on top of it. Right. Right, right, and the overall cap on any of those plans for, for 19, 2019, I, I believe was $56,000, okay. soon to be 57 in 2020, okay. and, and that's before the catch-ups. Yeah. So the catch-ups would, would rise that's you up. It's pretty exciting though. I mean, you can put like it's 50, a lot of money. over $50,000 a year away tax-free. Well, it, that's that's uh, very true. Tax and, and if you, you know, so depending on whether you're, uh, you, you, you like, pre-tax or Roth, right. the 401k gives you the ability to, mm -hmm. to do at least the deferral piece right. as a as Roth as Roth, opposed right. to, to pre-tax. So different options with one probably allows you to put more away than the other, but mm -hmm. right. things like, yeah. Right. Okay. And so, you, can, you can do all of those, the, the solo, SEP, simple, you can do all of that in self-directed? Yes, yes, they're all, yeah. you know, with, we, have, we have products, if you will, for each one of those, right. or we have all those plans. So it's it, so this is something I, I can roll money into it to start it. I can 
I can con can I can I contribute directly? Sure. Can people contribute directly every yep. year into, That's into the exactly, self directed? Yes. Yeah. So the self a self directed again. It's just again. It's a, whether your SEP is at with us at Fidelity or I'm sorry at Mid Atlantic or Fidelity. <laughs> right. You know, uh, you know, it's yeah. the contribution limits are the, are the yeah, same. The same. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, exciting stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I think to... I think it's something that really frees uh, frees the little guy up to do it with the. Well, big boys kind of keep as their own game because you know you were telling right. our team earlier that you know all the buildings around where we are here in Arlington they're they're all bought by retirement funds like like big ones big pensions big yeah they're uh, financed right, right by right mm -hmm. I mean you know when you look at when you look at big projects and, and by big I mean thirty right. fifty million right. dollar projects you know generally banks can't because they have they're constrained by the mm -hmm. you know by the regulators they they. You know they have to watch their loan mix, right, and they've, right. they've got a ton of, of things, and it's and it's, you know, I'm sure they feel it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. you know, but insurance companies and pension plans don't have those same constraints. So a right. lot of these big big projects you'll see funded by those financial institutions, right. and yeah. you know, and quite frankly, the other you know the other reason for that is those loan agreements right. are can look very different, right, right. you know, and. Yeah. Uh, no, that's what I mean. You're, you're alluding to, and I think that you know. I don't want to get too conspiracy theory, but I think it's you know the traditional models are a way to kind of keep the, the average investor. You know, well, you, you stick to your stocks and bonds and mutual funds, right? <laughs> but these are vehicles where now you can do bigger investments, you can own real estate, you can do things that these bigger pension funds are, well, are always have always been doing and making right. a lot of money doing. <laughs> and I think when the, when they're collecting one percent just to manage the assets and put right. it into ETFs and with more fees and all that, like there's yeah. There's a reason a lot of financial advisors scare people about these, and maybe they don't know about them as much. But, yeah, but well, it's I, they're kind of incentivized to not know about well, them. Well, you know, I, I think <laughs> forget I think, about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of the challenge is that you you know we have been conditioned yeah. to to do certain things. So if you right. you know one of the things I always talk about when I'm giving presentations right. is you know you think about you know we're in football season. Right. So when you are watching football on Saturday or yeah. Sunday. You know, Saturday, what kinds yeah. of, or Saturday or both <laughs> all day you know you see three types of commercials you see car commercials yeah. you know that doesn't appeal to any guy right, right, right. you know you see uh, you know you see the financial commercials right right, right right and the third one just completely left my head but let, let me know you think there's a third one. I was going to think like Alice yeah. or Niagara. Oh, yeah, Alice or Niagara. I'm like, all these. Like, maybe that's why I have the block. The guys want okay. money, but, <laughs> sex, and cars. <laughs> but when you look at, you know, but when you look at those financial commercials, they're all retirement plan commercials, right? right. And right. the reason for that is statistically, retirement plan money stays at an institution, I think, on the order of, of about 12 years. Yeah. Whereas your, your just your investment wow. money out of pocket is, is closer to six or seven years. So it's a better... You know, and, and sticky. It's, yeah, it is. It's sticky, and it's also you know it's a longer yeah. term. So when you're you know when you're looking at at uh, particularly investment uh, you know investment options and right. real estate generally falls into this. That is a longer term play. So if you're buying a piece of rental property, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or you're investing in a big multifamily you know, type of project, of years, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a number of years. That kind of you know. Uh, that that retirement plan is almost a better um, mm -hmm. match, if you will, right. for that type of investment because right. most people aren't going to touch their retirement plan, you right. know, especially if you're under retirement age yeah. for you Quite know a for a number yeah. of years, yeah. right? Because I know one, one of the things you mentioned earlier, uh, not not here, but in, in another conference we were in, is that um, buying real estate and probably lending to real estate are the two one of the two. The two main things that you probably see with your right. clients. Right. Just walk us through. Let, let's say I know Dan and I. We have we do a number of projects, and we have a lot of people that use their IRA funds in this type of vehicle to mm -hmm. invest in our projects. Let's say someone wanted to do that. Uh, they have a hundred thousand dollars. They want to invest in one of our mm -hmm. projects. The IRA is considered like a separate entity, right? So then it has to. It, it's almost it's investing directly well, think, into the project. Just right. tell us a little bit about okay, how that so, works. So think think of it this way: you have your investment account now. Right. Okay, your IRA account now and wherever it is. And on your statement, it shows that you've got an investment, an ABC fund, you own right. Google stock, you've got all these different holdings. Right, right. So in a self-directed account, instead of seeing those stocks and bonds or those mutual funds, what you would see is, you know, 125 Main Street. 
218 South Street, okay, right. and, the, and the values of those things, okay? okay. If you are a, uh, maybe you own a, an interest in an entity, so right. a lot of times typically what happens, you know, there's a, an LLC or a limited partnership that's formed and, and, right. it, and it solicits funds and, mm -hmm. and right. those funds come in. So your investment might be X number of shares or certificates in the 125 Main Street Right, but it won't, it won't be your name, it would be the IRA as right. a, almost like an individual right. owning so, it. Or, right, so right. by definition an IRA is a trust. Trust, right. Okay, so it can hold assets and, right. and you so, know. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, let's, I think, let's, uh, I'm gonna get on the board just, all right. just so we can use it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't used use it yet, it's a, but, uh, a new toy. <laughs> new toy, just so, so people can uh, get a clear picture of this. So obviously we're talking Look at that. Almost makes my writing look good. <laughs> Self-directed. Yeah. I R A. Yeah. All right. And we know uh, it sounded pretty simple on uh, what I what I couldn't invest in, right? I I, I can't do uh, collectibles, right? Right. Or life insurance. Or life insurance. So that's. Uh, a big no, life insurance, which that life insurance would kind of be a weird one to put in there, right? Because it's it already has tax advantages normally, correct? Right. It, I agree. I would agree with that. So that's a no. And the, the collectibles, what is, that's like, you said wine. Fine wines, art. works of art, um, you know, anything that's got that collectible nature to it has a okay. numismatic value. Okay. And and, uh, and one of you know one of the things uh, specifically you might have uh, so gold bullion although some you know in a lot of worlds that's that's a collectible that's specifically exempt from those rules so hmm. so gold you can buy you can okay. buy gold. Okay. right gotcha but if you so had let's... like the gold ink and mask kind of thing oh, that wouldn't okay. that wouldn't so, work okay all right. So nice nothing thing. I could display in my house. Right. <laughs> no, that, right, right. That's <laughs> Definitely that, not. You, know, you guys help investors, well, with, yeah. right? You, yeah. you, you will help well, them decide. Well, that's, sure clear that's, the, the, that's the other reason that we want to get involved early in the process. Right. So because, know. you know, we're generally we're talking about investments here. The, you know, we're not talking about buying $1,000 of, of stock here. Right. We're talking about tens of thousands, hundred thousand, right. couple hundred thousand dollars of, of value. Right. Right. Okay. Nobody wants to get three quarters of the way down the line and in an investment and then it. find out that they yeah. can't do something. I mean, it just wastes everybody's time. So if you know we're having that conversation early and we're asking, you know, okay, what is it that you're looking to invest in? And right. we, you know, we we right. kind of ferret those things out. And if it's, you know, making sure that it's yeah. something that the client can do. So what? So what do we? You know, we know what we can't do. That's a short list. Like, it probably leaves right. a lot that we can do, but that would. We've talked a lot about real estate. You said that's a pretty big one, right? Uh, what else are you? What else are you seeing that, that people are? Well, we see we see like, a lot of real estate. We see a lot of loans. So okay. I can loan. I can I can right. lend what a lending lend right. on real estate right. or yep. lend to a small business or yep either. Okay. Uh, you know, generally you would obviously if if you could you'd like to get a security interest in something, right? You know? uh, but that's strictly up to the client. Um, you know, the other things that we see a lot of are, uh, you know, oil and gas used to be popular a couple of years ago, especially on the, on the mm -hmm. heels of fracking and all those sorts of things. Minimal, mineral rights fall into that okay. group, which could be actually real estate as well. Okay. Um, hedge funds are another thing. Uh, you know, you have to have a self-directed so account. Private to do equity. That. Yep. Private placements. So mm -hmm. all of it, you know, essentially any type of investment that is not publicly traded. Right. Okay. Okay. Is, okay. You would need, you'd, you'd need to hold that in a self-directed account. Mm -hmm. Okay. So quite a bit of stuff you can a lot, do. A lot of, yeah. a lot of different right. stuff that, you know, you can't, you can't typically put your IRA in. And right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, it just opens up a whole new world. Well, it, it, for it does. And it is, you know, again, I think what, what self-direction allows you to do is to leverage your knowledge and your ability mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, and put that to better. You know, and then just right. me, me personally, just to share with people, like I've been at this for two years, uh, still have more that I'm going to de deploy, but 
but so far we're, we're in a, uh, a tech startup. That's that, and that was a private placement. Uh, we, we did one in a, a real estate project in DC. It was a commercial deal. We, we put money into a winery and resort. We're in a, a real estate fund, Grant, one of Grant Cardone's funds actually. So we, so we gave some money to Grant Cardone with it. <laughs> and you've done all this through your self-directed IRA, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We're, and then another, another one we did was a, a bank, a small bank that is kind of in the, the startup mm -hmm. phase. And I think you mentioned earlier that-, that Many, many de novo banks, banks start right? with about 30% of, of retirement plan money. Yeah, so this, this is all stuff that you know, I, I think is going to deliver a lot higher cash on cash return than, than we're getting yeah. in stocks and just a, a and bigger, bigger investment return overall. And typically these are the sorts of things that entrepreneurs in particular are interested in doing. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're, they're looking for things that maybe they know a little bit more about, mm -hmm. uh, maybe have a personal contact with right, or, right. or you know, have, have a better understanding of what the investment is. So one of the things, I mean, to touch on this, that point you mentioned, I mean, as I'm, I'm an investor essentially myself. Uh, mm -hmm. I do real estate development, but I consider myself an entrepreneur and investor is that people always talk about risk, right? We're, we're evaluating three or four projects or three or four potential options. What is the risk? You know, risk to me really depends on your knowledge of the subject. Because again, if you're getting heart surgery done, you want a heart surgeon who's done this for 10 years, right? Versus maybe me doing your heart surgery. So the same thing is that that's why I feel so good about real estate because I know it and I feel comfortable with it. And you know, I say majority of, of all my investments are in real estate. And I think my risk goes way down because I know about it. So I do every day. So I think that's what you're alluding to is that well, things you know are, can be more profitable and less risky. What? And this allows you to do it. Right. That's, well, that's very true. And I mean, risk, risk means different things to different people. So it's sort of that one man's floors, another man's ceiling sort right. of thing. Uh, you, you might look at a real estate investment and because you understand it and you know right. it and, right. and you, you, know, it, you, you understand when you walk into a property what you're looking at, right. somebody else might not, maybe a, a tech engineer might not look at that. However, right. the tech engineer might understand some new techie thing that's right. coming out and there's a startup company that's putting that all together right. you know for him that's less risk for me it's high risk right, right? exactly <laughs> and I'll, and I'll give you I'll give you a good example you know this is this is a good yeah. story but when I first started and uh, you know and it'll give you my my give you a, a sense of my level of uh, knowledge <laughs> on animals the uh, one of a, a client called me up and and she wanted to invest in and alpacas. Okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to visualize this in my head. Okay? They're not what, right? What is, right? What, what is, I, I know what it is, I, you know, and, I, and back in those days we actually had dictionaries, right? So I'm yeah. like going through, and there's a, thank God there's a picture. I go, oh, llama. Uh, okay, llama you know, right? All right. So we're going through this thing and, right. and you know, she's talking about the, uh, you know, what she wants to do and how the whole investment right, works. Right. And, it, and it made sense. And at the end of the call I asked her, I said, okay, I, I just, I got to know. Why llama? Right, exactly. Okay, and she said, "Well, I'm a vet, oh, and I'm a large, go. I'm a large animal vet. So, okay. and she's going into to wool yield and bloodlines and all these things, which okay. just made me, you know, my eyes glaze over. Yeah. So for me, you know, don't touch the, it. <laughs> right, the cat and I don't even really talk. Right. You know, I don't. Exactly. You know, I don't. Right, right. We, no, we just pass. Yeah. It would be allowed. The the llamas would die. Okay. Yeah. You know, for her, she understood it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, it's again, you know, when we, we do a lot of seminars for investors as well, and that's a big question, what's the risk here? It's like, you can't just put a number on the risk. I think either you have to have personal knowledge of what you're investing in or have some trusted people. You know, like Dan and I, the investors that they invest with us, they, I guess, trust us because this is what we do all day long. They don't maybe have, a, have an intricate knowledge of how to do a real estate development deal, but they know we do. So either you or the sponsor you're going with should really have that knowledge. That, that's probably more important than the maybe type of investments. Right? Well, and, and I think what happens, you know, and real estate is a good example of this, you know, when, when you put a, get a property under contract, generally there's a due diligence period of right. time where you run through right. stuff mm -hmm. and you involve, you know, an inspector and a this mm -hmm. guy and a that guy and a other guy. And, and basically you're, you're effectively, you're working through 
right. some of your advisors, and I'm kind of using that term yeah. a little loosely, mm -hmm. okay? You have an attorney involved right. a lot of times. So, you, so you're involving your team. You know, I mean, so we, you know, in real estate, we sort of do this almost intuitively. In a lot of other mm -hmm. types of investments, people don't, people don't do that. In stocks and bonds, I mean, how much... Right. Yeah, how much of that actually goes on yeah, at, how much the, can at the you person? Right. Right. Exactly. You, just, you, <laughs> you know, have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And I mean, but some people <laughs> Who really knows what Google and Facebook. Right. Are but some, but some yeah. people are. Yeah. Well, my my phone does. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's easy. But you know, know. It, it is. You know, but for them, yeah. their level of comfort in that is is different yeah, yeah. from what mine would be. Right, right. Okay. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Again, you know, I can't stress enough that you know I think this is such a great vehicle. I'm so glad we have something like this. Um, one thing I was even thinking about earlier today is, for, for example, my kid's college fund. My daughter's about to go to college in January, so we invested, you know, 18 years ago in a college fund. And back, I think, I don't think there's such a thing as a self-directed college fund, right? You have to invest in whatever well, they, they, your choices there, are. There is something called a Coverdell IRA or an ESA, which is an educational Right, but IRA. how much can you put in? It's only $2,000 right, a year. Right, doesn't cover anything. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> Three you know, textbooks. And if you, really. <laughs> And if you, you know, but if you started early, uh, you know, right. maybe, maybe there's an avenue there. But, uh, you know, I think with the advent of 529 plans, That's, which are the state right. plans, uh, you know, there's, there, there's a better, for right. most people, there's a better vehicle for right. funding that sort of thing. Yeah, so for, with her, we, we put in a certain amount of money, you know, in 18 years ago, and we were stuck with, these are the choices you have. And we, right. we did, it, it grew, it, you know, grew to a reasonable number, so we've got a good amount for her college. But again, if we had something like this that we could use those funds for to invest, it would have been you know much better, right? right. Uh, you know, and, so and typically, you know, what you're, you know, when when people look at their assets, generally speaking, on a household level, their biggest asset is their home, correct? Yeah, hands down. Their second biggest asset is their retirement plan, right? Mm -hmm. And and then they have other investments, mm -hmm. you know, which are quite frankly are a distant third. So if you know if if advisors and and, mm -hmm. and you know, financial advisors and people right. are saying, well, you need to diversify right. this this investment pool, your personal investment pool, but this your second biggest asset is supposed to all be in stocks and bonds. That right. doesn't, you know, yeah, that, that doesn't, doesn't make, make sense to me. <laughs> no, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make a right. lot of sense. You should be diversifying that as right. well. You know, and, and everybody has well, they, they need their the own determination. They need, of the, what, they need the management fee. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. you know, they, well, you know, but it's, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But, they got to make money. But you, you know, so you you have to. It, what self direction really allows you to do is to is to take better control yeah. of of all you know of your financial assets, right. and and invest them in a way that you're comfortable with. Right. And for different people, that means different things. People who are self employed, people who are in real estate, for instance, are more given. To, to I mean we're all quite frankly we're all given to to, right. to invest in things right. that we deal with every day or at least on a, on a regular right. basis and I don't I think that's human nature yeah. more than anything else and self-direction allows people to do that and I think yeah. that's probably the biggest you know and if you can do it on a you know if you can do those things on a tax deferred or Roth yeah. on a tax-free basis you know there's a there's a, a an overall advantage to your wealth building Right, right. Yeah. That was exciting stuff. And and also you mentioned diversification. So you don't, if you have, let's say, again, $100,000 in IRA, you don't have to move all of it to a self-directed, correct? You no. can take 50000 or whatever right. and still have your traditional IRA doing the stocks and bond thing. Right. Yeah. But then, yeah, um, yeah so it's, yeah. it's very flexible. You know, it's all up to you how you want to play it, right? So right. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for being on the show, Jack. This has been awesome. I think you gave a ton of value. You know, we got a lot of real estate agents who, who watch this channel, listen to this channel. So I think a lot of them are probably inclined and comfortable with investing in real estate. And this, this vehicle really opens that up at a, at a greater level, you know, mm -hmm. especially if like most agents, they, they did something else. So maybe they've got a 401k from an old company or mm -hmm. have been using that, the SEP uh, IRA for a while. Cause that, that's pretty popular for mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. solo agents or, or people that don't have big teams. So I think there's a ton they can learn. If, if people want to get uh, a hold of you, we'll obviously we'll put it in the show notes. You can go to hyperfastpodcast.com and and you know see the show notes and all the past episodes there. So make sure you do that. But if, if people just want to reach out directly to you, what's the best hey, way to get in touch? I'm a, I'm a phone guy, so feel mm -hmm. free to call the office 240-575-3880. 
Mm -hmm. uh, extension 201. Uh, Directly to you. My, okay. is, yeah, well, <laughs> unfortunately, you'll, you'll have to run through somebody else, I'm sure. And, and do we ask for Jack, John, or Jack? <laughs> Either one, right? <laughs> no, you want to ask for Jack. Jack, okay, gotcha. you know, but, uh, but based, somebody there will yeah. be able to help you. And and, uh, and, and you we'll guys work, work nationwide, so anybody are, listening anywhere pretty yep, much can do it. So we have, we have clients all over the country, and they have right. investments all over the world, quite frankly. Okay. So, so it's not open. just, yeah, oh, it's, it's, well, it's a cool thing. It, mm -hmm. it is... It is literally, it's, mm -hmm. the, you know, everything except those couple of things that you had up there before. Oh, before, yeah. 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 Where is it? You know, real estate and collectibles. Somewhere. So, you oh, know, the other way. That's all right. Look at this. There new, we go. New it's toy. coming, it's coming. Collectibles and life insurance well, are the... Collectibles and life insurance so, are off the table. Everything else, fair, fair game. game. There you go. And I appreciate your your uh, your time and I, and having me on. It was it was a great time. Both that of you guys great, appreciate it. Time. Yeah, well, love love to have you back. Just just to, to talk more of the CPA side. Maybe maybe do a, a top ten things for real estate agents and, and real estate investors to, to look out for when it comes to taxes. So. Uh, anytime, anytime. Everyone needs a good CPA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thank Thanks you. again, Jack. You're great. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, leave us some comments. We want to know your feedback and share this with someone that you think could benefit as well. And if you want to see more great videos, click this playlist up here, or better yet, click right here to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of our updates.